In this video, we're going to talk about some features of the CX350 that perhaps sound similar, but do very different things. So you can know what one function does and what the other does and when to choose between them. For example, the digital zoom and the eye zoom. What is the difference between those two? Well, the camera has a 20 times optical zoom. So it has a field of view about equivalent to a stills camera shooting with a 24 millimeter lens at full wide angle. And then it can zoom into the equivalent of basically 480 millimeters. So almost a 500 millimeter lens on the same camera. That's the range that you have optically. Beyond that, there are a couple of other ways to extend the magnification. First is the digital zoom. Digital zoom is basically a doubling or a five times or a 10 times magnification of the image. So you assign it to a user button and when you press the button, it'll magnify the image. The digital zoom is not necessarily the highest quality way to go though. You can get extreme magnification, but it's probably gonna suffer in terms of resolution and contrast. So you have three settings of digital zoom, two times, five times, and 10 times. If you're shooting in ultra high def, you should experiment with them and see what you're comfortable with. In my testing, I think two times looks surprisingly good. Like you could pretty much use it and, and no one would know that you were using a, a digital zoom. It, it retains pretty good resolution and pretty good contrast five times and 10 times, I think it loses too much. The degradation is noticeable. So if it's an emergency, fine. But if it's, you know, you, you just trying to integrate footage in the middle of an ultra high definition production and you put in a 10 times digital zoom, it's not gonna be seamless. People will notice that there's something different about the shot. It'll be softer contrast. It'll be softer detail. It, it doesn't look quite the same. In high def, I find two times looks really good. I mean, like surprisingly good. The digital zoom at two times looks really good. At five times, I think it even looks okay. Not 100% quality, but kind of hard to tell in some ways. Some shots may be more noticeable than others, but I think there are times you could get away with a five times and five times digital zoom is a lot and it actually looks pretty good. 10 times I think is too much, but it might be okay if you were shooting standard def. Standard if it might be able to support 10 times. You really have to test for your own knowledge. But that's how digital zoom works. Let's compare that to iZoom. iZoom is totally different. iZoom is a variable range extension of the zoom range. So you, you zoom in 20 times optically. You go from 24 millimeter equivalent all the way up to 480 millimeters equivalent, right? When you turn on iZoom, you can keep going even further than the optical limit and it's kind of free. It's like there's no image resolution loss, there's no contrast loss, there's maybe a slight increase in the visibility of noise, but it's basically free. I leave iZoom on all the time because I just I love how well it works. iZoom works in ultra high definition to make you an equivalent 24 times range zoom, and it works in high definition to give you the equivalent of a 32 times zoom. Now how iZoom works, it doesn't magnify the image. It's normally the sensor is scanning the full width of the sensor, the full size of the sensor. But the sensor is a very highly packed, very dense, high resolution sensor, 15 million pixels or so on there. And you only really need about 8 million pixels to make an ultra high def image. So there's more pixels than are necessary. So when the camera zoomed all the way in and you're on iZoom, then it starts cropping into the sensor a little bit. It'll go from the 20 times optical range up to the equivalent of 24 times. It zooms in a little bit more and gives you that extra oomph. When you're in high def mode, it gives you up to 32 times equivalent zoom. It's, it increases the zoom range another 60% by cropping in. And the, the camera, again, is so oversampling. There's so much resolution. You don't lose any detail whatsoever. So it's really nice. I can't say that it's the direct equivalent of having an optical 32 times zoom but it looks really good. It looks like you have, it looks like you have an optical 32 times zoom. So I zoom, I leave it on at all times. D zoom, mm, use it every once in a while when necessary, but the I zoom is, is great. But they do different things. I mean, the I zoom is not gonna give you 10 times magnification like the D zoom can. You just have to make sure that you're okay with the way the image changes. Now let's talk about the image stabilization systems in the camera. 
the camera has optical image stabilization. And what that is, is, you know, when you're holding the camera and you introduce a little bit of shake, a little bit of unsteadiness, a little bit of whatever, the camera can compensate for that because it can reposition where the lens elements are and it can re-aim. So if you aim the camera slightly off to the left, it can re-aim the prism off to the right and keep the image framed as it was. It's really neat technology. It's been around forever, but it's kind of neat how it does that. Within that lens, it can reposition on two axes. So for tilting up and down or panning left and right, it has the ability to compensate for those. Optical image stabilization is tunable. You can go into the menus and tell it what type of optical image stabilization you want it to use. There are three choices. There's normal, which is used for handheld motion. And then there's pan and tilt. Now, normally, in normal mode, any motion, it's like, whoa, let's cancel that out. You know, let, let's reposition. Let's make sure that nothing moves as much as possible. And that's fine until you exceed the camera's ability to compensate. You know, there's only so far that it can repoint that lens before it's like, whoa, I'm at my limit. And when that happens, if you haven't moved the camera to clear it, then it'll be stuck there and it may even jump back. And that's one reason why we say turn optical image stabilization off when you're on a tripod. The tripod's already stabilized the camera. So if you go panning the camera, optical image stabilization might fight you. It's a thing. It can be a problem. So we say to turn optical image stabilization off. However, OIS is really good at some things. For example, little tiny vibration. Maybe you're, you've got the camera up on a tripod and you're up on a pedestal, and just as people walk around on the floor, it adds a little bit of vibration in there, and that can make some rubbery images. You turn optical image stabilization on, that'll suck that up. It'll, it'll just vacuum that up and, and, and get rid of those vibrations. So Panasonic has made a way to program the optical image stabilization to optimize it for your usage. There's the normal mode where it tries to cancel everything that it encounters. And then there's a pan and tilt mode where it's expecting that you're using the camera on a tripod. And when you do a big motion, a big pan or a big tilt, it lets you, it doesn't fight that. So you get smooth motion without that side effect of it, you know, catching up or it jerking, but it still cancels out little motions. So little tiny vibrations, yeah, an accidental bump of the camera, anything like that, it'll still cancel out. So you get the benefit of OIS without the weird side effects. The stable mode is designed for when you're doing a lockdown shot on a tripod, any motion whatsoever that the camera sees, it's gonna fight, but it's gonna assume that any motion is gonna be very small. So it's great at getting rid of tiny vibrations or little tiny shakes or, or your hand just, you know, when you go to on zoom, if you twitch just a little bit, it'll cancel that out. But stable is not expecting to see any motion whatsoever. No, no panning, no tilting. So if you're panning and tilting, don't set it on stable. Set it on pan and tilt. And if you're not on a tripod, set it on normal mode for handheld. Optical is good, but it could be awesome. And awesome is where the hybrid OIS comes into play. When you use hybrid OIS, it uses everything about the standard optical image stabilization system that all stays it's not one or the other hybrid just adds on top of the optical image stabilization system so what the hybrid does is it adds three axes of digital stabilization to the optical so the optical normally works on two axes again that's tilting up and down and panning left to right that's where optical works the hybrid adds canceling out for rotation for sliding up and down, or for sliding side to side. Well, if you think about handheld and handheld and walking motions, that's pretty much exactly what we run into. When, you, when you're carrying a camera and you're walking, it's rocking back and forth and, and sliding up and down a little bit. So for handheld use, the hybrid is fantastic. There are times when, especially on the wider angle end of the zoom, that you know I've, I've done interviews where I can just hold it pretty rock steady with that hybrid image stabilization on there. I don't even need a tripod. So it's fantastic for that. I wouldn't necessarily recommend using optical and hybrid together when on a tripod. Hybrid can do the same kind of catch up thing that optical does. For example, let's say you have a case of where you are panning in an arc. 
So you have the camera on a tripod and you're panning in an arc. Well, if you have hybrid on, it's going to see that as a rotational movement and it's going to try to cancel that out until you stop moving. And then at the very end, it has to rebalance itself, neutralize itself out, reset where the pointers are, right? So if you see that kind of thing happening in your footage at the end of a move, you may still have hybrid on and you probably have to turn it off in that case. But for handheld use, I turn it on and leave it on. And one really nice feature about the CX350 is that hybrid works even in ultra high def. Some of the prior cameras, it only worked in 1080, but they've extended that to where it works in ultra high def as well. So even in shooting 2160p handheld, the long end of the lens, you put that hybrid on and you'll be able to get stabler pictures than you ever would have just out of straight optical image stabilization. Hope that makes sense and that explains the difference of these various features. If you want to learn more about the CX350, you can download the book that I wrote, The Guide to the CX350 Camcorder. Panasonic makes it available as a free download to you. And you can check out the rest of the videos in this channel for even more tips, tricks, and ways to use the CX350. Thanks for watching. Panasonic.